Okay, 501 crew. I've uh, been just looking at the syllabus today and thinking about how to uh, start a conversation around research strategies as we're moving into the legal theory class. And I thought I would just share with you in a very short video um, one of the ways that I do my own research and uh, we're going to use while we're doing uh, the 501 course this year, just so you can see what my practice is and um, maybe it'll help guide you with respect to some of the things that uh, all the many little tasks I'm asking you to do during the um, term. So one of the assignments is that for every reading that we do, or for the assigned readings that I ask you to do in this way, I'm going to ask you to make summaries with respect to the readings that you're doing. There's many ways to do this. This is the one we're going to use, and that is I'm going to invite you to do a one page maximum summary that you will distribute to your colleagues. And on it, I've asked that you provide the full bibliographical information for the piece. And then what you put in that summary or engagement is really up to you in many ways. The goal for it is not to be, that it necessarily will be like a summary or an abstract that you would publish out in the world. It's to be a summary or an engagement your summary, your engagement with some of the things you thought about when you read it. And you're not summarizing it for people who haven't read it. You're providing a summary for people who have. So what you are trying to document in this process is something about your engagement with that summary and something that you might carry forward. So I'm going to just show you um, what that looks like in my world because this is what I started doing in the first year of my own master's uh, work at Michigan many years ago. So uh, I have a series of binders that look like this. Here is my, it says on it here, summaries F to L, um, A to E, M to R, and S to Z are over there on the shelves as well in these binders of one page summaries. So I just, we're gonna sneak down here so I can show you what some of them might look like. So here's my binder. So now when I say to you a one page summary, uh, some of mine are obviously longer. If you've got a book, they, they could be longer, but since we're sharing them with each other for this exercise, I'm only saying to you, you don't need to exceed one page. The goal is to condense, not to expand. So, what they look like in my in your world and in my world can be either typed or handwritten. Um, I think I've got a lot of thoughts around the, the places and the reasons why working with your hands can be really productive, but we live in a multi-platform world, so you'll do what you want. But the information at the top to enable someone else and in fact, you to locate it later in the world so you have the full bibliographical information on your page and you don't have to go searching for what it where it is. But you'll see on this one, for example, in the days when my handwriting was nicer, um, you can use color, you can use spacing, and mine has pretty much quotes. So, you know, out of this chapter, I really love this quote on page four to five. So I'm just gathering here a combination of ideas and quotes that I really like that I might want to return to in the future. So it could have a form that looks like that. Um, sometimes it's messier. So this is another example um, that has a bunch of ideas and I'm showing it to you because this one comes, you can also do a summary of a talk or a lecture you go to, right? But I know this was Rainer Forrest, it was two pictures of justice, but you'll note that I forgot to do the things that I'm asking you to do. So when I go back to it and think about it or want to reference it in an article, in a paper I'm writing, I have a difficulty because I can't remember where or when this talk was. So you'll see I still have this thing. I would have to now do the backwards work to go remember when I heard him, what he said, and how to make use of it. But it's still useful for me. I still make reference to it, but the citational pieces trickier because I didn't do that work here at the beginning. Um, you can see in um, other contexts, it's straight up typing of the kind that you can do. We will be reading some Foucault. So you can see here is just a Foucault example where again, in this time, I'm asking myself questions like, what are the problems that arise in the use of an author's name? So it can be your 
uh, responses rather than just, um, and you don't have to get it right, is the point I would like to make for you in this. When you're doing these pieces, what you're attempting to do is find a touchstone or a space of resting so that when you're talking or thinking about a piece later, you will have written all over your, your hard copy or made your annotations in the way you do, but you want to start thinking about how to condense ideas or thoughts or processes out of the pieces that you've read. And these should be, like sometimes I've discovered when, I, when I've done this, I keep these now in a binder. I used to keep them in file folders in various places. And sometimes I would discover that I'd done more than one of them in the past and I'd totally forgotten that I ever read it and then did another one again. So, you know, sometimes you're overwhelmed by ideas. But what becomes really interesting then is looking at how you summarized or understood at different points in your own research trajectory. So it's totally fine. It's lovely when they're gathered together and you can kind of make reference to the things you thought at one time and the things you thought at another. So I want you, as we're doing this, to think of these not as kind of objects for the archive of brilliance, but as moments or interventions in part of this research practice of having an engagement with an author enough that it's like the first grab of something in the conversation that you would have. And we're going to be sharing them with each other, not because they're right or accurate or because others will rely on them, but part of this is sharing with each other the things that we're learning in this research process of trying to engage with theory. So think of these as something that you're making for yourself and that we're sharing with each other um, to kind of extend our community of theoretical engagements so that we can start to have windows into different ways that different people amongst us are engaging with the works that we are commonly reading. So there's um, some kind of observations into the kind of questions that you'll want to ask or think about as you're doing the article summaries. And I've now got five binders or four binders of these on the shelves. And this all started in, you know, the 90s when I was doing my graduate work. And I find I go back to these tons, not because they are kind of right or accurate, but they really can help generate lines of connection, um, memories about where you were, when you were thinking those thoughts, and um, huge like pathways for thought. So think about this process as starting to kind of build that um, a little archival memory of interactions and um, conversations with theorists that we'll be sharing with each other. So that, um, we'll, this is the, what we mean. This is what I mean when I say, let's start working on our shared article summaries with each other. And that, um, and my mother would give me a whole lecture about how I should have cleaned up my office before I let you guys in, but yeah, it's part of the work of theory.